Meow. Hello everyone, my name is Swingpoint and welcome back to VA11 Hall A. Oh my god, we are really starting to crank through this series. You guys have been seeing tons of this game lately on the channel because I've really been plowing through it because I'm loving this game, but I kind of want to be done with this game at the same time because it's been like weeks since we started playing it because it's a long game, but it's been an absolutely amazing game the entire way through. And thank you guys so much for being absolutely incredible, liking each one of these videos. You guys have been amazing. Keep it up. I love you. I love you. I love you. Never have I ever seen such support on a series with the likes. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Please, 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 and thank you. <laughs> so, I'm kind of nervous, though, with this game. Because, even though Jill is still kind of dealing with the loss of her ex, Lenore, we kind of hit a point last episode where Alma did a good enough job of making Jill feel good that it almost feels like we made it through that point of the story. Which means that there's going to be another problem coming up. It's typically how that type of thing works, right? So I'm kind of nervous for the next couple of days at work because I feel like something's about to happen. This is Mega Christmas Eve, so Mega Christmas is probably going to be one of the big ones coming up. Yeah, it's, oh, okay, so it's going to be today, and then tomorrow's going to be Mega Christmas, which is going to be the party. So the party's probably going to be a big thing that happens. Okay. Hmm. Jill had enough money to pay off her electricity bill, so we're good with that. And what we're going to do now before we go to work today... Let's take a look at our phone, see what the augmented eye is all about, and then we'll be golden. Update, Lilum receiving mysterious messages. Ooh, more stuff. It looks like we were able to record and transcribe one of the messages. Ooh, from one of the compromised signals. Joe Wren, an anchor from our popular TV newscast, served as one of our very own and a test subject for the investigation. Who are you? Are you really alive? Ha! <laughs> You're special to me. You're everything to me. It's time to become one. White noise intensifies into transmission. Developing. Spooky. Or a made-up story, right? So, four is her cat, which you know by now. I mean, who am I kidding? You guys have been watching this series. Four is the cat, and it's kind of like Jill's alter ego. Because <laughs> I don't think four actually talks. Nanomachine rejection has taken... Ooh, this will be an interesting read. Has taken 80 lives this year. Oh, God. I wonder if she's among those 80. I mean, technically she is, right? Unless this article was before that, right? The Health Observatory just released their annual report on nanomachine rejection cases. The total number of reported cases has risen to 80, an increase from 65 last year. Nanomachine pollution was particularly strong this year due to recent protests, wrote the observatory. Protests caused the police to release new varieties of nanomachines. Their function is still unclear, according to sources, but they are intended for crowd control purposes. It's unlikely we'll find a cure in the near future. And we can only hope that cases like these will become rare in the following years. That's so weird, man. Like, it just seems so illegal that the government would do that type of thing. Model Warrior Julianne returns this February. Oh, God. <laughs> the classical magical girl show Model Warrior Julianne is coming back to a public television this February after almost two decades of absence. Ooh. Is that a tear in your eye? No. <laughs> Even though the show has been... Oh, wait a second. Model Warrior Julianne returns. Oh, yeah, because she loved this Julianne girl. That's why we don't call her Julianne. We call her Jill. Oh, yeah, right? That was totally this story or totally this show. Even though the show has been on every on-demand service for a while now, most of Glitch City citizens need to think twice before subscribing to any non-essential service, especially the lower classes who have a limited number of internet purchases per year. The show's return is certainly welcome. Today's parents will finally be able to share a piece of their childhood with the kids without risking dinner or breakfast. Wow. And yeah, I guess if you... I never really talked about this, but Glitz City is, like, poverty-stricken. It's not good in Glitz City for a lot of people. It's kind of one of those things where the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. In the intro of the game, it talks about that. I don't know if we went over the intro, but... It does talk about how Glitz City has some... I can't think of the exact word for it, but there's like some disparity. Yeah, income disparity, is that the right word? There's Everything's not equal here in Glitch City. Grand Slam Fighter, so this is the only new article here. So I'll read it real quick, and then I'll let you guys know what's going on with it. It looks like it was just people talking about the upcoming wrestling event on TV, so not that big of a deal. Let's go to work. Saturday, December 24th. Ooh, make a Christmas Eve. Good evening. Ah, oh, hey, Joe. How are you feeling? I won't say good, but not that bad, I guess. That's nice to hear. Yeah, where's Gil? Did he, did he run away again? Nah, I have him on errand duty, buying the drinks for tomorrow. 
Mega Christmas party! That sounds weird. Coming from the owner of a bar. Every drink from here would come out of our own funds. So, if we're gonna spend money, we may as well get more variety. Besides, those kind of walks are always good for Gil. You're the boss. Uh, who's coming so far? Well, there's the three of us, the dogs. You invited Titty Hacker, Gil invited Jamie. Oh yeah, Titty Hacker. I also invited Dorothy when I called her to spend the night with you. Sounds good so far. Invite anyone else you feel like inviting, the more the merrier. I could, but I bet everyone's made plans by this point. That's true. I'll be in my office. Call me should anything arise. Ooh, I wonder if we're gonna have the choice to invite people. Who am I kidding? We've never really had choices in, in this game. It'll be interesting, though. Alright. Let's get that jukebox bumping. Time to mix drinks and change lives! Wait here, I'll check inside. Ooh. Welcome to Valhalla? Whoa, new people! Hi! Oh, a BTC bar. What does BTC even stand for? I can't even remember. Nope, still not getting it. Excuse me, do you know where the Athena Convention Center is? Why does that place make people get lost so easily? <laughs> they should have called it the Minotaur Center. <laughs> That's a funny joke. They don't get it. They don't get it. Hold on, let me scribble the directions on paper. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, go to the right when you see a building filled with hobos. <laughs> this should be it. Thanks a lot. Anything else I can help you with? Hmm, nah, what the hell, I'll have a drink. Yeah, what about you? Uh, a Brantini, please. Right. The girl asked for a Brantini, the Lilum freaks me out. Ooh, that's a Lilum right there. How did you know? I'll have to take a look at her, I didn't really pay attention. So, let's get you a Brantini here. Now, we can't do slot two, so I can't just, like, give the drink to a Lilum. We learned that with Verhibitablogilio, whatever. Verhoblo, Virgilio, I give him all sorts of names. The douche guy. <laughs> So we can't serve two drinks, even if we think it might be in the best interest to kind of, like, help lighten the mood a little bit. So, let's get a Brantini bump in here. Here you go! Thanks. So, how do you know- Oh, wait. Because she's got a freaking robot elbow. And, I mean, I guess these are kind of a giveaway, too. I guess I just figured they were some sort of decoration. Yeah, she's definitely a Lilum. She kind of looks robotic. That's an interesting outfit in this cold season, miss. Bella. Well, I'm actually cosplaying, so call me Vela for the time being. Oh my god, are you nerds? And your little friend is... Essentia. I get it, you're cosplaying too? <laughs> Maybe not. Sure, let's go with that. <laughs> Have you heard of a game called Yik Bartender? Oh god, that's a weird name. That cult classic game that has seen like three remastered versions made by six different companies this year? <laughs> That one. We're in a cosplay group dedicated to it, and we got lost on the way. I heard you talking to someone outside. Oh, yeah. A friend is cosplaying as Alex. I told him to wait outside. Uh, shouldn't he enter? He'll be fine. Is this something amiss? There's a girl behind you. What? Short hair. Black sailor uniform. Missing an arm. Dana? Wearing jeans under a skirt. Now, now, don't spook the bartender. Spook? <laughs> Anything else? Could that- okay, so... I- it's hard for me to remember this stuff because it's been so long, but I do remember at the beginning of the game when we were introduced to whatever the hell it was we were doing in Valhalla, there was a girl named Anna which introduced the game. Some of you guys said that that was Jill, and I just kind of like took it as is. And then when I actually looked back, because I added Valhalla to an outro, I saw that a Anna, yeah, Anna, was the name of the person that was at the beginning of the game. So maybe she's talking about Anna. I can't even really remember what Anna did other than kind of introduce Valhalla. I d did she like pop out of the TV or something like that? I don't know. Maybe you guys can go look it up for me. I'll get a fluffy dream and be on my way. You? I'm fine. <laughs> Vela asked for a fluffy dream, and the Lilum still freaks me out. <laughs> sure, let's do a fluffy dream here. Oh my god, I can get her wasted! Ah! Here's your fluffy dream! Oh my god, it looks so fluffy. 
<laughs> Here you go. Yep, this is the thing. Damn, I got dizzy pretty fast. I better stop here. He's <laughs> my my bad. Now that I think about it, just uh who are you, um, Essentia? Isn't she a friend? I guess, I don't know. Wait, what? I just kind of met her at a convention and she's stuck with me ever since. <laughs> she also seems off, like she's missing something or thinking too much. Interesting. Interference. Slow synchronization. Well, I won't hold you any longer. We should go. Goodbye. Oh god, she's- I wonder if I ruined her. No! I didn't- no! God, I, I never know what to do with this alcohol stuff here, man. I loaded her up and now I feel like I made her leave right away. Please, come again. Why the hell are you on the floor? Tased by the vending machines? I wonder if he set off something to piss off Didi or Gogo. Who's Didi or Gogo? Black sailor uniform? I hope I'm just overthinking it. I'm missing something here. Maybe it'll click later. More importantly, jeans under a skirt? Oh, talking about the person behind you. Valhalla. I don't know much about Lenore, but I wonder if that's her wardrobe. Oh, hey, Dorothy. Oh, hi. Oh. See, it was this girl. It was... You see that? That one that was just in the TV right there. That was the one that came and talked to us right at the beginning of the video game. Anna, right? Where did you go? Oh, she's gone. It was totally that lady, though. She's, like, stuck in the TV. Oh, hi, honey. Are you okay? I just kind of wandered in here. I guess I'm a bit distracted. Can Lilum just wander? Can I get you something? Oh, um, uh, uh, a sugar rush. Yeah, that. Uh, right. Dorothy seems down. She asked for a sugar rush, but hasn't she told me about a drink that cheers her up? Piano Woman. I associate Piano Woman with Dorothy. I don't know why, but I do. So, I am sorry? If I'm making a grand mistake here, forgive me. <laughs> but we're going with it. Aged and mixed piano woman. I don't know what cheers her up. Ah, uh, here you go. This is. Didn't you say you liked having a piano woman whenever you felt like celebrating or when you were feeling down? I did? Wait, I did! You actually remembered such a thing! Woo! Go, mate! Wow! You're so sweet. I was half expecting her to say that she meant. A literal piano woman. Glad I was wrong. <laughs> Look at her face. She's like super surprised. So much silence. Yeah, especially out of Dorothy. Uh, by the way, thanks for staying with me the other day. Turns out I really needed that. So, did you enjoy the soda? Oh! Did you find that one out? Uh, was it supposed to be a secret? <laughs> no, but I don't go around telling everyone about that. I did it because it was you who needed my help. But a hug night is usually one of my most expensive services. Ooh, really? It is? Hey! I don't know if the client has body odor or something like that. Not to mention, it limits the chances of getting any other client that night. Still, did it help? Yeah, it helped. Helped me cool down a lot. So, from what Dana told me, someone close to you died, right? Yeah. You want to know more about it? You want to tell me more about it? I brought it up enough times already, I think. No problem, then. You were sad, and that's all I needed to know. Sorry for the loss, though. I, I mean it. Thanks. Although, I've wandered for a while. Do you, you Lilim, really understand death? I've wandered for a while, excuse me. Sorta. Kinda. Our whole database is constantly being backed up in the collective source. Even if our bodies are destroyed, we could be deployed again with our personalities and memories intact. Huh. So our concept of mortality might be different. See, but again, it kind of hits on the, even if she's being backed up, this one dies. Right? It'd be like if humans had their brains backed up. Just because your thoughts are still there doesn't mean, like, you're not dead. You're still dead. The you that was there is dead. Right? I don't know. We do have a fear of death, though. You do? We can't even begin to understand the idea of not being redeployed. 
While we have built-in warnings, the mere idea of that nothingness is paralyzing. There are a few that don't mind it, but we do fear death, and we don't wish it on anyone. In fact, that was the argument used for abolishing the whole three laws thing, huh? You seem quite knowledgeable about robot history. Seeing what others have done to make sure that I can live like I do helps me not take things for granted. Seriously though, those laws were bullshit. Can't harm humans, can't disobey humans unless it's about hurting them. And you protect yourself as long as it doesn't harm humans. <laughs> Look at her chubby little cheeks. I mean, sure, the first AIs were just helpers and tools. But how could those laws still apply to them after they achieved self-awareness? Who in their right mind would abide only by rules inscribed in some old book? I mean, if I remember correctly, those were only the distilled versions of the laws some writer imagined over 100 years ago. They were a reduced version of all of his ideas. However, many authors afterwards took to them like they were the very laws of physics or something. And like many other things, people distill and exaggerate what they need and use it to their favor. Wow, you're a nerd. <laughs> yeah, I wonder how they keep them in check. So, yeah, when Lilim are made, they put like a bunch of personality traits in them. They put fears, and I guess also the fear of death into them to kind of make it so they don't go doing, you know, robotic master race thing. I don't know, man. Huh. And she brought up another good point about observing what other people have done to make it so that she doesn't take her own things for granted. Oh my god, that's such a good lesson. So many folks need to learn things the hard way by doing it themselves rather than just learning from someone else. If there's anything you can take, it's to learn to take advice. Oh my god. Look who's talking. Let's change the subject a bit, though. My mood's getting gloomy. Your apartment is very comfy, you know. It's a tad small, though. Sorry about that. And your cat is so cute. What was his name again? Four. Yeah, why four? I figured if you ever got lost... <laughs> at least I wanted to be able... <laughs> at least I wanted to be able to yell, FOUR! <laughs> it happened once. You'd be surprised by how many golf players you run into. <laughs> And every time you play with them, you can say it's foreplay. <laughs> he was also named after someone. Really? Who? A little kid that wanted to transcend. What? A movie character or something? Sure, let's go with that. You want anything else? Uh, let's see if you know me that well. Give me something I'd like. Yeah, okay then. WWDO, what would Dorothy order? Oh god. So, I mean, Dorothy's kind of all over the place with her drinks. She has mentioned that she drinks these moon blasts, but she doesn't even like them. And she also has ordered things like a sunshine cloud before, too, so... I don't really know, man. I kind of want to give her a moon blast, because she can't stop drinking them, even though she doesn't like them. So let's- yeah, you know what, let's do it. She always orders them, but she can't stop. She can't stop ordering them, even though she doesn't like them, so let's just try it. Let's see here. She hates these. Yep! Just nice. You always order either sweet or girly drinks. That was a no-brainer. Girly and sweet drinks for a sweet girl. <laughs> I still can't believe you actually remembered what I said about a piano woman. It's always good to keep note of what the regulars like, you know. I've wondered for a while, though, why do you keep coming back here? For you, of course! Ah, uh, come again. Why else would I come in if not to see you? You're one of the few people willing to hear me out, always filled with curiosity. And you're cute. Talking to cute people is always nice. <laughs> There's also the bar, the way it's insulated from the noise of the city. It's really comfortable. And it's just a bit away from the street I'm always at. It's a win-win situation! I see. It was weird to see you down, though, especially since you're always so lively. Well, I wasn't down, really. I was just thinking about a lot of things. Ooh, like what? Yeah, like what? Well, my mom, the uh, very, uh, guardian, asked me to go home on Monday for a bit. And as much as I love her, being with her is usually tiring. Guardian. 
That whole thing about someone taking care of a Lilum after they're deployed until they reach maturity, right? Yep. And I'm proud to say that I reached psychological maturity in just one year. Oh my god. That's crazy. They always try to keep a varied pool of volunteers to make the collective source grow faster. Dude, isn't that crazy to think, like, she's born all the way to, like, maturity in a year? What the heck? God, I'm not even at psychological maturity. <laughs> so, uh, what's wrong with your guardian? Well, she still treats me like a kid. The worst part is that sometimes I fear she might see me as some sort of replacement for her dead daughter. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, <laughs> dead daughter? I was deployed and not too long after she lost her daughter. A contrived coincidence, really. Even when I was still developing self-awareness, I always feared she might be using me as a replacement. She didn't, though. Or at least not consciously. At times, she would just stop doing something or return a gift she's given me. If she felt like she was projecting too much of her daughter onto me. What irony that years later, I'd be making a living pretending to be someone else in the bedroom. How's that? Well, most of the time, my job involves role-playing. A daughter, a student, some helpless kid. It means that I've gotten many clients looking exactly for that. But on the other hand, from a professional standpoint, I'd rather have them hire me because of me. Because of my character, not because I'm the one that role-plays as little girls. Maybe I need to exaggerate some attribute. Yeah, what's the problem with your guardian, then? If you do that on a daily basis, why worry about it? Because I don't want to make her sad. Every time I visit her, I fear she might look at me and see her daughter. That makes me sad. And at this point, I don't even care if she's projecting her daughter onto me. I just don't want to make her feel sad. Aww. Did you try talking with her? How so? Telling her just what she said to me. Clear up those fears. I mean, unless she's not the kind to want anyone opening up to her, that is. I mean, I guess I never really thought to talking to her about that. It doesn't sound like something you just bring up, though. Keep it in mind, at least. Maybe she'll appreciate the gesture. I wouldn't know, though. I'd, I haven't met her. She's a really nice woman. The problem is mostly with me, I think. Well, then, I'm taking my break. Oh! Oh! I'll be leaving then. No, what I was trying to say is that I'm taking my break, you wanna come. Really? If you don't mind talking on a chilly night in an alley behind the bar, that is. <laughs> yeah, I've done worse in alleys. Dorothy. Let's go! Boss, take a break! Alright. Ooh, break time. Ooh, break time. Ooh, Dorothy's actually on this little... Loading screen here. I never noticed that. Huh. So it's kind of interesting. Hearing Dorothy's story, hearing that there's a, a ghost behind me, running into some con nerds. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Huh. Well, let's go ahead here, save this here, and get a little preview into what we're doing next. And then we'll be... We'll be on our way here. It's not safe to keep playing. Oh! Break time! Don't call me Becky. I just got an achievement called Don't Call Me Becky. What? Are you really offering a little girl a cigarette? Okay, guys, so thank you guys so much for being here. I appreciate it. If you have been enjoying this series, go ahead and click like on this video. That way I know you guys want to see more of VA11 Hall A. Really interesting. I think we're getting close to the end. I want to see what this mega Christmas party is all about. And I'm really interested to talk to Dorothy a little bit more in here. So thank you guys for watching. This game has been a ton of fun. I love the characters. I feel very close to all of them. I don't know. It's such a weird feeling. I just hope none of them die. <laughs> I'd be so crushed if one of them died. I mean, Lenora died, but we didn't know Lenora, right? Oh, God. I'm, like, nervous about it. A couple of things I really want to do. I want to see Mr. Donovan again. I want to learn more about Gillian. And I want to... I mean, I kind of want to see what was going on with this Alice Rabbit thing. Some of you guys have been, like, posting things, kind of, like, spoilerous stuff in the comments, so I'm kind of, like, staying away a little bit from the comments, trying to, like, skim through things that could be spoilers. But I think... I think we got ourselves a really interesting story coming into the end here. I think there's, like, six different endings, so I don't even know which path we're on or what affects it. I don't know. 
Really enjoying the game, though. I'm glad you guys are, too. Thank you guys so much for being here, and I will see you in the next video that we do around here. Hello, everyone. My name is Swing Point, and welcome back to the shadows that run alongside our car. We played this recently, and we realized that there's two perspectives that you can play through in this game. The guy's perspective and the girl's perspective. And we chose the guys first, 